Hey everyone, this is Illicit Metalworks Chainmail Workshop. The reason why I decided to do it online is because, as you may know, San Mateo Maker Fair has been cancelled for this year, and there's a virus going around, so I thought, hey, you know what? What a great idea. Let's put it online so everyone can enjoy it. So today we're going to learn how to do two different types of weaves. The first weave we're going to do is called the two and two. And the second one is called the Byzantine weave. Okay. So good tools to have to do chain mill is a pair of jeweler's pliers. And you want two pairs. And I find that over time, they actually start to wear down. Like I've done about 4,000 rings with this one pair. And you'll actually end up getting a little bit rounded. I actually find that's kind of a good idea, even if you just take a file and round them right away. That way it doesn't scratch your rings or anything. It's also important to note that there is no teeth on these two pairs of pliers. Okay, something that also comes in handy, especially when you're doing like a, a big vest, is long reach pliers. Okay, again, they're completely toothless. This comes in handy when you have to do some really fine detail work on a big vest and you just can't get your fingers in there. Yep. Now the types of rings I have are red anodized aluminum okay, and black anodized aluminum. All right, the size of these are 5 16 and they're 16 gauge find that it's really good to start out with just because they're easy to bend, they're easy to manipulate, and frankly they come in all varieties of colors so that it can work for anybody who wants more than just, you know, stainless or bronze, right? Hey, we also require a starter ring. That's going to be a keychain ring or anything. It's really just a place setter so you know where you started and where you've left off. I find that when you're doing a really big piece, it gets confusing really quickly. So this way you can always pick it up and say, oh, I started right here. I'm also using this dental pick to keep my fingers out of the way. It's good to just count all your rings and what have yous. So this necklace here that I made, it took about six hours of weaving and it took around 300 rings. And it's made out of stainless and bronze. Okay, so we're going to start off right away with the standard two and two. The reason why I'm starting off with a two and two is because the mechanics that go into this one actually really help out and are the precursor to the Byzantine weave, which is actually really, now it looks confusing, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually quite easy. We're going to go ahead and begin with the mechanics of just opening up the rings. And we'll start off with this one color here. All right. So whenever you're starting these, I like to grab them like this so that the open side is up. All right. And you're just going to put your jeweler's pliers on either side of them. There we go. And then you just bend it. A little more than enough that you can thread another ring in. Okay. And to close them, it's just the same. Grab it and grab it. Push it in tight. There you go. And you notice that there's a bit of a gap. That's fairly common. If it's too big of a gap, then you just kind of grab it and then just kind of work it back and forth until you can get a little bit tighter. Most of the times it's not too much of a worry. Like you can't get a ring to slide out of there. All right, just gonna make sure that's nice and round up. Perfect. All right, so to begin the two and two, I'm gonna start with my red color and you can start out with any colors. Right. I'm gonna open it. And then I'm going to thread my keychain onto it. 
Okay. And then I'm going to close that one. Just get it a little bit tighter. And then I'm going to grab another ring, same color. And I'm going to open that one up and do the exact same as the first one. There we go. All right, just like that. Now I'm going to open up two black ones. And really, once you get the hang of it, you kind of make up your own method for doing this. But the mechanics are all the same. Close that one. this one all right all right so the two black ones have been threaded through the first two red ones I apologize for the uh, the focus on this camera phone. It's the best I could do. All right. Now I'm going to get another two red ones. And I'm going to open them up. This one's already open, so that's a score. And then I'm going to thread them through those two black ones that I just put them on. Sometimes players just like to let go. That's just part of the fun. All right. So in order to do the two and two weave, this is pretty much the mechanic to do the entire thing. Just two threads into two, threads into two, threads into two, until you get a nice long necklace or whatever you're making. There's rubber rings out there, so if you want to make a closed one and without a latch, that's like a... It's a wristwatch or anything like that, they do come in handy. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the Byzantine weave, and I'm actually going to use the first three sets of my two and two to start that, just because the mechanics are the same. Okay, so I first start by taking my top two red ones, the last ones that I added, and I drop them down to the sides. Just like that. I then grab them. I open up my two black ones. And then I grab those red ones that I just pushed to the side and pull them through. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and set this down because now I open up two black ones. I always find opening up both of the ones that I'm going to be adding easier than just adding one and adding it on to the set. Okay, so then I just take this black one, thread it through, holding on to it so it doesn't get lost or mixed up. And I close it. Now, don't let go of this, because if once you let go of it, it kind of all seems to get jangled up. And we don't really want that. We're learning a new skill. 
and just don't need that little bit of restoration. All right, so I've now closed those two black ones that I've opened. All right, there we go. So now that is one set for the Byzantine weave. So now we're going to add another set to that weave. So we begin by opening up the two red ones. So as you know, my pattern is going red, black, red, black, red, black. Whoop. And then I thread them on like I would the two and two. Oop. That's why they call them jump rings because they like to jump around. Oop. There. I'm going to go ahead and close that. And I find that other little jump ring. And I do the same. See what I mean by the two and two kind of being this similar as Byzantine weave? So two goes into two goes into two. This Byzantine has a couple extra steps involved. All right. I strongly encourage you to pause the video at any time, go back, any way that it makes sense to you. All right. So there's two. So now that I've added two reds, I'm going to add two blacks to it. And this is what you should have so far. Okay, you can see our first set and our second set starting to come into place. So like before, I'm going to fold over those two black ones. Grabbing on those two reds. And then I fold over the reds and I grab those two black ones. Just like so. And because the last two were reds, sorry, blacks, we're going to add two reds onto that. And this is my first how to video, so I appreciate your patience. We all have to start from somewhere, right? All right. There you go. So I find that as long as you remember your color pattern, you should always be fine with doing this. Uh, for me, it's red, black, red, black, red, black. Once you get the pattern itself down, you could probably add a third color or even a fourth color if you really feel brave. 
But remember, you don't get good overnight. It took me a long time to just get the pattern down. But you do get fast at it. It just takes a lot of patience. But I know you guys can all do it. Anyhow, please go back to any part of the video that can help you out. And I hope you enjoyed.